Brethren, pray the Lord. We appreciate his safekeeping. He's our father and we are his children. The inheritors in the kingdom of heaven. And so God is our father and so we appreciate him. So let us pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you for yet another opportunity to interact with your word. We pray that you bless our interaction with your word, meaning that it's an interaction with you and it gives us life, it gives us joy, it gives us our existence in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, we thank God for every opportunity and um, he is our father. He is our father and we are his children, made in his very image and made inheritors of the kingdom of heaven. And so when we interact with his word, we know what he desires us to do and we also know what he doesn't want us to do and so that we shall remain in one accord with him. And so we shall continue with our episodes. And we started um, thinking and meditating on the book of Judges, the men and women that God raised up to guide his people, to lead his people, shortly after they had settled in the promised land. And while they were on their journey from Egypt, God had given them instructions, instructions to follow, what to do and not to do. The reason why we have the well-stipulated Ten Commandments and many other miscellaneous laws that were given as a guide for them as they lived in the land of Canaan, that they would be in one accord with God. And so when we read this, we also try to see how we can be in one accord with our God. Because when we do what he desires us to do, then it is life for us. And when we do that which he doesn't desire us to do, it means calamity, it means trouble. The children of Israel did many things that were not in one accord with him, and many nations would come and destroy them. And so here we read and say, but when something happens, where do we go? The children of Israel knew that actually whenever anything would happen, they would run to their God. The reason why that actually he is our strong tower and the righteous run to him and are safe. And so the book of Judges, this time we look at uh, one of the judges uh, who is a female and her name is Deborah. Deborah is the judge that we're going to look at and in the book of Judges we concentrate on uh, a little bit of uh, scripture, a little bit of detail that we find in Judges chapter 4 and chapter 5. And so this lady comes onto the scene. But before she comes onto the scene, remember judges would come and go. And whenever there was a judge, a leader of God's people, a charismatic military leader, people would be in one accord with God and they would do pleasing things to God and they would be blessed. And that was what it was. But whenever they did have a leader, a guide, they would go into their um, many, many, many things uh, that didn't please God. And so in chapter 4, we read again that, and the people of Israel again. And when we say, we read the word again, meaning that they had done it before and they do it again. And they did what was evil in the sight of the Lord after Ehud died. Remember our last judge that we talked about was Ehud. And now we are talking about another one who is about to come. And the Lord sold them into the hand of Jabin, the king of Canaan, who reigned in Hazor. The commander of his army was Sisera, who lived in the Haroshek Goim. Then the people of Israel cried. This was their outlet. This was their, you know, this is where they would find solace. This is where they would find comfort, crying to the Lord. And when they cried to the Lord, the Lord raised another judge. And in verse 4, Deborah, a prophetess, is mentioned. The wife of Lapidoth was judging Israel at that time. She used to sit under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim, and the people of Israel came to her for judgment. And remember, where there was leadership, you know, people would be guided 
And Deborah this time was the one actually guiding them, a lady, and she was called a prophetess here. And you discover that actually there are a few women in the Bible that are called prophetesses. One of them was Miriam, another one was, which, uh, was uh, Hulda, and we shall mention a few of them in time to come. But now, this Deborah is the woman that we're talking about, the one who judged Israel at this time. And so, but she didn't do it again alone. She could summon men and women other people to come and join her. And so Deborah was a wonderful lady that actually we're talking about. And the meaning of her name in Hebrew, this is one thing that I have discovered that every name in Hebrew has a meaning. And her name means a bee. And um, a bee, of course, actually does very many things. And so that was the meaning of her name anyway. But the point that we're driving at here is the woman that God raises to liberate his people, to deliver his people from the foreign nations, the Hagoim that had attacked the people of Israel. And attacked Israel because of what uh, they had done and um, God had, you know, set them off that way. So she's the only female judge that we talk about and called a, uh, called a, um, a prophet, a prophetess. And um, she settled down to settle disputes among the people. And as we read in those verses, like I've just been reading, she summoned, one thing that she does is she doesn't do it alone. She summoned Barak. Barak, the leader to lead the, the battle against the, the Canaanites. And in verse 6, the Bible says she summoned, she sent and summoned Barak, the son of Abinoam, from Kedesh Naphtali, and said to him, Has not the Lord, the God of Israel, commanded you? Go, gather your men at Mount Tabor, taking 10,000 from the people of Naphtar and the people of Zebulun. And here he goes. Well, now what we discover here is actually Deborah, the judge, does not go it alone. She summons other people qualified in other ways. And Barak was one of them, was this one. And the name Barak means thunderbolt. And uh, this is a, a flash lightning, of course. And he seemed to have been a well-built, energetic man who also actually did great work with the people of Israel. And maybe time allowing, we shall have to look at him, what he did to, sell, to save the people of Israel. And so Deborah summoned him and they went and this is what happened, that um, they saved the people of Israel from the foreign nation that was attacking them, that was giving them no peace at all. So indeed, the general enemy was Sisera. And when Barak attacked and God gave them victory, Sisera fled and took refuge. And remember, he runs, a general running. When you read this, running and then falls into the hands of another woman. And another woman is called Jael. The, she's, she's also a mother and a wife to somebody. And uh, the enemy runs and falls into her, her hands and he is killed over there. And so these things that we are reading, friends, are great, great, great lessons. But one thing that actually that I discover about Barak and in the presence of Deborah, when Deborah told him to go, she said, I will not go if you're not going with me, if you're not available. And uh, because actually she said, no, he said, no, I will not go. It is you with me. And so that actually victory would come my way. And so I find that actually she does great work, even giving confidence to the men. And you also need someone to work with and to attain victory. There are certain people that we cannot do without in our life. Now, Barak knew that actually he could not attain victory without Deborah. And so he said, until you go with me. And so I discovered even in my life, maybe even in your own life, there are certain people that you want to, you must work with for victory to come your way. And so if you're a husband, you need the wife that God has given you. If you're a wife, you need the husband that God has given you. If you're a child, you need the parent that God has given you. And the moment we discover our roles variously, then we are able to move. A leader will need the people that he leads. And the people that are led will need the leader that uh, leads them. And so in organizations, in families, wherever, this is actually very important that I discovered from Deborah. 
and the, the man Barak actually indicates it very, very clearly that he couldn't go alone. And so this is very important, friends, that actually this woman leads the people of Israel and another woman called Jael actually they team up. It was a team. They worked together to lead the people of Israel now. I wouldn't talk so much, so much, so much, but the scriptures, chapters 4 and 5, you can read. And chapter 5, she sings a song. It becomes a poem, praising God. She sings out and several things that actually we discover there. And um, she calls herself the mother of Israel, the mother in Israel. And this is actually Deborah calling herself a mother in Israel. That is chapter 5, verse 7, that um, the villagers seized in Israel. They ceased to be until I arose, until I arose. I, Deborah, arose as a mother in Israel. This is great. And the figure of a mother is very, very important. Here, when you discover, when you find it out, it will actually teach you greatly. And so mothers, Deborah became a mother in Israel. And actually she did greatly that actually this king and his general Sisera were defeated and Israel became a little bit free again. So a few lessons that we gather from this woman, Deborah, and the team that she worked with. Now, God, we discover that God calls and uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things. And you know, in their history, in their culture, the women would not do anything much. They were rated as second, second citizens, second class citizens. But listen, God raises this Deborah, Jael, and others. And so we have discovered from time immemorial and in all scripture, God uses men and women whom the world might think that actually are nothing. And the reason why Paul puts it actually God uses the foolish things of this world to shame, you know, the wisdom of the, of the wise. And so this, is, this is great. And last moment, the last time we talked about another judge who was left-handed, Ehud, if you remember. Ehud was left-handed and maybe people thought that he couldn't do anything. And so if there's anyone who thinks that they cannot do anything, God can use someone who is of that stature to do something extraordinarily. And we have read about David, the smaller, against the Gadol. Gadol means the big, the huge, the giant Goliath. And we have talked about that very, very many times. And so God uses ordinary, ordinary things. So even in our generation, you may be an ordinary person and you may be in your congregation, you may rate yourself to be, you know, a little down, maybe in your family, but God can use you. So God enables us to raise up. And so God can release us from our limitations. And I pray that God releases you from your limitations. You know, there are some people who may think that, someone may say that, no, even me, I can, I just, I'm a nothing, I'm thinking like that. And even Moses gave excuses, Jeremiah gave excuses, but God uplifted them. And so we pray that God will uplift you to be somebody, the ordinary, to do extraordinary things. So may God, whom we worship, lift us from our human limitations. And so the story of this woman, Deborah, and the, the other one, Deborah, the Jael, calls us to be challenged. Pray the Lord. Yes, challenges us. Deborah, if you're a woman out there, if you're a lady out there, you're a young woman out there, get challenged. If you're a person who thinks actually you're ordinary, be challenged. And then be strengthened. Be strengthened. Yes, challenged, strengthened, and then encouraged to carry on. And may God use you in wherever you are. That actually used the Deborah, used the Jael. And in our your ordinary, you know, it, this is the ordinariness. This was the word I wanted to use. In your, you know, ordinariness, may God use you. May God uplift you to bring something fresh in your community, to bring something fresh in your family, to bring life. Deborah did at her time. So we are called upon to experience God in ways that can transform us. And Deborah shows us actually the transformation that, you know, she would bring as a, as a judge as someone who would inspire people. This is very, very important, friends. And you and I, during our time, we are the people. God is calling you. God is calling me. God is calling everyone, wherever you are, to take your position. Deborah did. She could judge the people. She could get the people under a place called, under the palm tree. And they called it the palm of Deborah. Can you imagine that her name sounds and 
whatever it means that it was, but this is what the Bible is saying, that the palm of Deborah. So may your name be written somewhere. May your name be pronounced somewhere. May my name be pronounced somewhere that actually something uh, will be remain outstanding in the society, in the community, in the church where you serve, in your family, that your name stands out. And Deborah gives us a challenge. Deborah strengthens us. Deborah encourages us to take our position. And so, another thing that we learn from Deborah, we discover that this lady, Deborah, was, must have been a very busy woman. Because when you read chapter 4, verse 5, that she could get there and do guiding the people, judging the people, like Moses did. He remember Moses was also a judge until his father-in-law, Jethro, came and guided that do this, this, this. But Deborah must have been a very busy woman judging. But one thing that we discover from her is that actually she exhibited wisdom. She exhibited revelation. And indeed, she was a woman of discernment. And she used the judgment. She used the, the times that she would interact with her people and give revelations concerning all these dealings. So she was able to read the times and seasons of our God as she kept listening to the people, as she kept interacting with them, she remained focused, alert to the voice of God. Friends, I discovered something great from this woman, Deborah. And that she summoned Barak and other people, you know, bringing salvation for the people of Israel. She listened to the people. And so for those of us who are in leadership, you are in leadership wherever and you are interacting with the people, may what they share with us give us a way forward. You know, Deborah judged, but she was, she would listen to them, and it would give her what to do next. And so this is important. Those of us, uh, you know, interacting with the people, may they be, you know, points of action, being focused, being focused on what God desires you to do, but also the needs of the people. And so that you are driven into action by what you have heard among the people that you lead. Is it a family? Are you a husband? Are you a wife? Are you a leader? Are you at work, wherever, in your community? And this is the point that actually interacting with the people will give you a point of action to carry on. And so in chapter 5, verse 12, you know, this man, uh, this woman tells uh, I mean, the God actually announces, wake up, wake up, wake up, Deborah, wake up, wake up, wake up, awake, break out in a song. Arise, Barak, arise, Barak, lead away your captives, a son of Abinoam. And you saw when it, it, it is from then, actually, after listening, and, and so they, are, they, they were arisen, you know, he, he told them, arise, awake, and take action. When you listen to the people, when you listen to the people, when you know the, you know, the, the concerns, you are called upon to take action. Now, in a church, in a family, in whatever, wherever you are. And the reason why it says arise, arise. So we need to be alert. We need to pay attention. And um, when God is about to move, you know, there is, God will use our situations in which we are. Your situation in which you are, the people that you are around with, you know, they will give you a way forward. And so, when no one else could, Deborah, arose and she did uh, her work and so one other thing as we would tend to the word towards the finish is deborah worked out a plan to deliver uh, god's people she called an army and the reason why she involved the barak she invited, i mean jail was in the background and so we need to you know we need to work together friends this is our time but we also need to have wisdom like these people had, Deborah had, and other judges had. And so be one with a plan. Young man, be one with a plan. My brother, whoever you are, be one with a plan. My sister, be one with a plan. Deborah had a plan. And so as you have a plan, you move out to accomplish it. So she was a woman of resolve. She was a woman of commitment. When you have a plan, you get out, you set out to accomplish it. And all of us need to do that. At the beginning of the year, World always shout resolutions, resolutions, resolutions. And may God enable us to accomplish our resolutions. Our resolutions. As we make them, before you get married, you make a plan. 
As you start your job, you make a plan. As you begin your business, you make a plan. As you go to school, you make a plan of how you are going to pass senior three, or how you are going to pass university, or how you are going to pass a plan. And so Deborah challenges us in this, on this front that actually she was a woman of resolve, she was a woman of commitment. And may God who enabled Deborah enable you to accomplish your plan in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, one other thing is there is joy in leadership when people are responsive. I found this great. When people respond, the people that you are leading respond to your plans, respond to what you are engaging with them. It's joy. Amen. And so, in chapter 5, verse 2, Deborah says that the leaders took the lead in Israel, that the people offered themselves willingly. Bless the Lord. Friends, this is critical. Even if there was nothing much that you would learn from Deborah, but this is very important because we interact with the people, we are leaders, whatever. But then she says that actually leaders take lead. And so I call upon all the leaders in whichever capacity you are to take your lead. But also, he, she says that actually, and the people offered themselves willingly. There is joy, there is joy in leadership when people, you know, the people that you are working with, the people that you are sitting with, the people that you are interacting with, you know, willingly do them. I mean, supervisory work becomes a little easier. Pray the Lord. And so this is what Deborah actually puts to us, that actually, um, you know, the princes, the leaders, you know, offering themselves and the led, offering, I mean, pray, I mean, uh, offering themselves willingly. And so we are calling upon the willing, the willing spirit in our family, the willing spirit at work, the willing spirit in our nation, the willing spirit everywhere, that actually we may, we are moving together. One moves, another moves, and then the willing spirit in the church, willing spirit in the church, willing spirit at our family level, willing spirit between husband and wife, willing spirit between parents and children, willing spirit, pray, pray the Lord, willing spirit. And this is actually, I found it very, very critical in verse 2, willing spirit. And may God enable us actually to have willing spirit. And then um, as I turned towards the, the close, the finish, Deborah was confident that God was going to do his work. With God, things are possible. Without God, yes, I mean, we fail here and there. And so Deborah was um, a woman of confidence. I pray that God gives me the confidence that to know, to remember, to focus on him and know that he is the enabler. Any milestone, any success, any victory, any triumph, it is him. And so young man, young woman, man, brother, sister, our confidence in God to grow. And so that on our own we can, we know that actually we are not able indeed. And so the testimony that Deborah gives us in verses 4, 5, you know, you just want to read it and then we shall pray to close, that Lord, when you went out from Seir, when you marched from the region of Edom, the earth trembled and the heavens dropped. Yes, the clouds dropped water. In chapter 5, verse 5, then the mountains quaked before the Lord, even Sinai before the Lord, the God of Israel. And so we believe that actually God when God moves, even during our times when there are challenges here and there, God, when God moves, when you have the confidence, and even when the Israelites were moving, with the confidence that actually God was moving along with them, things were, you know, were good. And so, friends, the life of Deborah impacts us. A woman, a prophetess, a charismatic leader, that led Israel at the time and the people that had, you know, had suffered under the foreign rule for a while because God had deserted them. Deborah arises, Deborah awakes, and she mobilizes Barak. And in the background is Jael, another woman, 
and they together move. And we are saying that actually with the willing spirit, we move. And so I challenge us, I challenge you, I challenge myself, and I challenge everyone else that finds this information, the willing spirit, we move. And so that actually glory, all glory turns to God in heaven and on earth, peace, on earth, calmness, where we are, enjoyment, comfort, and we move as one. So Deborah challenges us, Deborah challenges you, Deborah challenges me. And we pray that God will give us the spirit that we may move together and build his kingdom. Finding God is finding life. Finding God is peace. Finding God is joy. Finding God. And with the reading spirit, we move. And may God bless you and watch over you. And so that we shall move together during our time that we sh our name shall be written somewhere. My name, Eridadi, written somewhere. Your name to be written somewhere that actually this man or this woman did something. Deborah left a mark. We did leave a mark in the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.